This is a, a lecture by Harold Pinter on the occasion of him winning the Nobel Prize. And I'd never listened to it in full, and I did last night, and he said so many things. There are no hard distinctions between what is real and what is unreal, nor between what is true and what is false. A thing is not necessarily either true or false, it can be both true and false. Truth in drama is forever elusive, you never quite find it, but the search for it is compulsive. The search is clearly what drives the endeavour, the search is your task. More often than not you stumble upon the truth in the dark, colliding with it just glimpsing an image or a shape which seems to correspond to the truth, often without realizing that you have done so, but the real truth is that there never is any such thing as one truth to be found in dramatic art. There are many. These truths challenge each other, recoil from each other, reflect each other, ignore each other, tease each other, are blind to each other. Sometimes you feel you have the truth of a moment in your hand, then it slips through your fingers and is lost. So language in art remains a highly ambiguous transaction, a quicksand, a trampoline, a frozen pool, which might give way under you, the author, at any time. To maintain that power, it is essential that people remain in ignorance, that they live in ignorance of the truth, even the truth of their own lives. Political language, as used by politicians, does not venture into any of this territory, since the majority of politicians, on the evidence available to us, are interested not in truth but in power and in the maintenance of that power. To maintain that power, it is essential that people remain in ignorance, that they live in ignorance of the truth, even the truth of their own lives. What surrounds us, therefore, is a vast tapestry of lies upon which we feed. It never happened. Nothing ever happened. Even while it was happening, it wasn't happening. It didn't matter. It was of no interest. It has exercised a quite clinical manipulation of power worldwide, while masquerading as a force for universal good. It's a brilliant, even witty, highly successful act of hypnosis. I put to you that the United States is without doubt the greatest show on the road, brutal, indifferent, scornful and ruthless it may be but it is also very clever. As a salesman, it is out on its own, and its most saleable commodity is self-love. It's a winner. Listen to all American presidents on television say the words, the American people, as in the sentence, I say to the American people, it is time to pray and defend the rights of the American people, and I ask the American people, to trust their president in the action he is about to take on behalf of the American people. It's a scintillating strategy. Language is actually employed to keep thought at bay. The words, the American people, provide a truly voluptuous cushion of reassurance. You don't need to think, just lie back on the cushion. The cushion may be suffocating your intelligence and your critical faculties but it's very comfortable. And then in that same presentation, he read an extract from a poem by Pablo Neruda. I'm explaining a few things, and it's such a powerful poem. I'll just read you the beginning and the end. And one morning, all that was burning. One morning, the bonfires leapt out of the earth, devouring human beings, and from then on, fire, gunpowder from then on, and from then on, blood, bandits, plains and moors, bandits with finger rings and Dutch essence, bandits with black friars, spattering blessings, came through the sky to kill children. 
and the blood of children ran through the streets without fuss like children's blood. And then you read, then it closes, come and see the blood in the streets, come and see the blood in the streets, come and see the blood in the streets. It looked like Gaza right now.